In a few moments, we're going to take you to the arena for four first-run exclusive matches this week on WCW Worldwide. Now, though, is a dangerous time to be a part of WCW Living Legend. You know the NWO, how strong they've become, how dangerous they've become once again. But if you look on the other side of the ledger with a Ric Flair and a Goldberg, and, and I don't know where the macho man Randy Savage stands, there's some great athletes on the other side of the ledger as well. Well, you know, it's interesting because wrestling was always dangerous. It was always physically dangerous inside the ring but now it's become full of treachery the money is too big the championships are too big the television coverage is too big people will do anything for the power and the glory and the money the treachery makes it more dangerous than ever especially when treachery is on the side of the new world order all right time to go to the arena we're going to be back with you at the end of the program for four exclusive matches here are mike today and scott hudson Thanks a lot, guys. A couple of youngsters on their way to the ring back today. Mike, a match you can deem a contender contest. Two men, two journeyman competitors, you can call them. Not rookies anymore. On their way up, this will be a firm test for Jerry Flynn as he steps into the ring against Lenny Lane. And as you know, Scott, the WCW Executive Committee is in attendance here at this WCW Worldwide event. They are looking at these two competitors. They are trying to see who moves up the rankings, who's going to be in line for future title shots in World Championship Wrestling. When you look at Lenny Lane and Jerry Flynn, we're talking about two very diverse competitors in terms of wrestling style, in terms of size. Jerry Flynn, of course, with that martial arts background. Thunderfoot Jerry Flynn against the wrestler Lenny Lane who has primarily competed against many of the cruiserweights in World Championship Wrestling and from Lenny Lane you'll see more of a high-flying aerial type offense where Jerry Flynn will rely more on the ground game and let's not forget the psychological difference between these two just like that Lenny Lane playing to the crowd Jerry Flynn keeping his head in the ring gets the early advantage Lenny Lane not one prone to show a lot of discipline inside the squared circle, Jerry Flynn with the martial arts background shows a lot of discipline, and look at that. Singapore clothesline just knocked the taste out of Lenny Lane's mouth. Drops the knee across the head. And as we've mentioned on so many occasions, especially as it relates to some of the younger competitors, was that rapid fire kicks by Flynn in the corner. I'm thinking of, of a wrestler like a Disco Inferno, who we often talk about loses his focus. It's all about maintaining that level of concentration in the ring and staying on top of your opponent, just like Jerry Flynn is in the corner. And Jerry Flynn at 6'4", that's some serious extension into the lower jaw of Lenny Lane. Lenny has not gotten untracked here. Oh, what a stiff kick right in the gut. Well, those two contrasts that we talked about have both played into Jerry Ooh. Flynn's advantage in the early going. The martial arts background, he's used it here to dominate. Hooks the leg, gets two, and the kick out by Lenny Lane. And he's also used his size and power advantage to maintain control here in the early going. And as Goldberg marched through the competition here in WCW, Toward 174 and 0 before the loss to oh. Kevin Nash at Starcade. Many of those victories came over Jerry Flynn, but we remember, Mike, those were some of the stiffest challenges Goldberg faced on his march to the title. I remember back even early in that run of 173 or 174 victories that Goldberg piled up that to Jerry Flynn on one occasion. Thanks to the use of his submission techniques, he actually had Goldberg in trouble at one point. And uh, he is a specialist at using that cross arm bar, that cross arm breaker, a submission type move that, that Goldberg you will often see now use in the, his matchups. Well, Goldberg will tell you he learned from every contest he won during that incredible undefeated streak through WCW. And he will also tell you he learned a lot from his matches with Jerry Flynn. Hang on, Lenny Lane. No! He went fish off first directly into the top turnbuckle and hit hard and Jerry Flynn is exactly right showing a little more intelligence in there than Lenny Lane and we talked about that cruiserweight style high flying aerial antics from Lenny Lane and that time they backfired on him nice field throw out of the corner from Jerry Flynn and Lenny has shown flashes of offense but not much Flynn dominating here oh telegraphed it 
Into the jawbreaker from Lenny Lane. There's life left in Lenny yet. Here we go. Bulldog into the mat. Quick cover. Lateral press. Hooks the leg. Lenny Lane gets a two. And only a two. Nice series of chain moves that time by Lenny Lane. And now it looks like it's high risk time. Lenny Lane to the top rope. Lenny for Oh, Lane. no. No. Just a little mistake like that. And the step there off the top. There's the cross arm breaker. That's it. The cross arm bar. And the immediate tap out by Lenny Lane. Lenny Lane, one misstep as he went up top, and that cost him. Jerry Flynn, the veteran, took advantage, and the championship committee, furiously scribbling notes backstage, they saw what a victory Jerry Flynn scored here in a jam-packed worldwide arena over Lenny Lane. Well, it was Jerry Flynn from the opening bell in control. Lenny Lane had that momentary flurry just when it looked like he was about to turn the tide, and he had to slip. We take another look. There you see Lenny Lane going full speed into the corner, not able to connect with Jerry Flynn. Flynn takes Lenny Lane out of the corner. That was right after the misstep off the top. The submission hold, the cross arm bar applied, and the ensuing tap out. He represents tradition. This is the 13-time former champ, Rick Flair.